Dear brothers and sisters, <laughs> last week, uh, Father Stephen and I were chatting before liturgy about the gospel of the day. It was a key of Sunday. He joked during his homily that when you hear the reading about Zacchaeus, about to get reading. So when you hear today's gospel, it's going to get real her, as Deacon John says. So last evening at Vespers, we began inserting a few hymns from the Latin Triodian into the services. The Triodian, it's a book that contains 11 hymns. Father Stephen, I love this story, it comes out every year. He gets, he gets embarrassed that he tells it over and over again. I love it. Again, he's Glenn's coming. He says that uh, his copy was given to him by his grandfather, so it's very special. He, he must have bought it from the discount rack at St. Peacock because uh, the, the cover was printed upside down. Well, my copy is right side <laughs> Probably because it's a gift from uh, Nadine Cliff and her sisters, and I don't think they had a discount rack at the St. Vladimir's. <laughs> so, as the hymns of the Lent services are kind of being eased into our services, our church eases us into Lent. The more we get closer to it, there's a buildup, there's a tension, there's a momentum. But once it gets rolling, it keeps rolling, rolling, rolling. It draws us into the season, it draws us closer to Pascha, hopefully, closer relationship with our Lord. So today's Gospel from St. Luke is known as the Publican and Pharisee. It's truly the first preparatory Sunday of Great Lent. We always say the pre, the preparatory, the pre, pre, pre. This is it. It's, it's time. This gospel, you didn't notice, four short sentences. Contains two of the most important spiritual tools of our faith. Humility, repentance. With these two tools, brothers and sisters, we can accomplish much. First, the definitions. It is kind of uh, self-defined in the gospel, but I've had some questions. A publican isn't somebody that runs a bar. It's a tax collector. <laughs> they were disliked, like most tax collectors, I guess, when he wants to pay up. But they're also considered dishonest. In Jesus' time, the tax collectors, they take what they need for Caesar, a couple bucks for themselves. So they're usually pretty rich. Pretty well uh, looked down upon. The Pharisee, it's a whole different, whole different ball game. It's a Jewish sect. Uh, they're known for their strict observance of Judaism's rules. And honestly, they're pretty obnoxious about it. They were the ones standing right up front, looking at me, as you can tell from the gospel. Now, you might hear about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Again, two of the big Jewish sects. The Pharisees were known for their, uh, again, piety, or outward piety. The Sadducees... Well, they were just a little bit different. The Pharisees believed in the afterlife, and the Sadducees didn't. So they were sad. <laughs> Nothing to look forward to. So the gospel sets a comparison between these two. One who considers himself holy, the Pharisee, he said, he was said to have stood and prayed thus with himself. Anybody see a problem with that? He was praying without God. Although he was pious, he followed the rules, he did not have God in his heart. So his prayers, they weren't effective, or at least much less so. He went on to judge others, praying, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. Brothers and sisters, all of those practices are good. They're pious. For God, please. If you have God in your heart. But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't have God in his heart, and he did not have humility. Without those, no workers. Recall Matthew 6. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad continent. Sad continent. Countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Show them off. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, 
so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in, a, in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Again, all about humility, brothers and sisters. This Gospel of Matthew, it's a very close parallel today. You see, the Pharisee has his temporal reward. We're not looking for that. We're not looking for what's here on earth. Our reward is eternal in heaven. So let's take a look at the publican. He stood afar off and kept his eyes to the ground, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Note his posture. He's humbling himself physically before our Lord. We call this a matanya, which is literally a turning away from sin. And by the way, if you want to get an idea about what matanya is, please come to clean me the first week of Lent. I assure you, you're going to give your fellow matanya. So next, think of his prayer. God is merciful to me, a sinner. What does this remind you of? The Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. So the publican, widely considered a sinner, shows true humility and repentance. Jesus says the publican is justified. Again, it's a simple lesson. Four short sentences, but oh so powerful. The prodigal, he's going to receive his reward of the eternal. <coughs> I love this gospel. I do. Not because it makes me feel good. No, no, dear brothers and sisters. I love it because it convicts me. It speaks to my many sins. But it also gives me the tools to move closer to Christ and away from my sin. It nudges me toward that autonomy, that turning away from sin. It's not all about me today, brothers and sisters. I'm going to convict your conscience just a bit. We are always the heroes of our own story. I say this just about every time I preach, because I always put myself in that position. So I, exam I ask you to examine your heart. How many of you, upon hearing this gospel, see yourselves as the publican? And say, thank God I'm not like the Pharisee. I do. <laughs> we are wired to turn it right around. Probably in the middle of a lesson that our Lord is trying to teach us. I said, I'll often have these thoughts. So we have to remember we're more like the Pharisee than the public. Each and every one of us. It's true. We have to move as the public. Remember, humility and repentance, that's our goal. Our church gives us a bit of a break this week. It's fast free. Steaks on Wednesday, fried chicken on Friday. <laughs> Father Dan's going to be, be a Gilligan to get the prime rib Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> Have whatever you want. But don't think of it like other denominations. Shrove Tuesday, Fasnacht Day, Fact Tuesday, for the, the New Orleans stuff that they watch it. When we had our last hurrah before Lent, or they had their last hurrah, they came out the covers. No, the break our church gives us it serves a completely different purpose. Not to say you can't clean out your refrigerator with all the good stuff, but it's a break from fasting so that we're not tempted to think of ourselves as more pious because of our practices. It's to help us control our pride. Again, recall St. Matthew's Gospel. Wash your face. Don't be proud of our leftist set of practices. They're not supposed to be outwardly focused to be inwardly focused so that we can become closer to Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, these four sentences of the gospel are simple. Not much explanation is needed. They are powerful. They're simple. It's going to take a lifetime to master. So you may know by now, I do it every time, that I like to give you a, full, a few tools to take with you into the world after divine liturgy. Today is no different. So here are three difficult takeaways that are very simple. One, focus your lifelong struggle in your heart. It's the true measure. Number two, try not to judge anyone. Difficult. It's 
much easier when you're focusing on your own faults and your own sins. If you finally repent, you know your sins, most of them, right? Turn away from them so that you're creating a throne in your heart for our Lord. Just heard that yesterday. It was strong. It was strong. So let us all try, dear brothers and sisters, today to be more like the Father, the public one. To focus inward, to have humility, to think about that time, that turn away from some of the things. So then we may all together enter together to our heavenly kingdom, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.